Good evening. Welcome to, I think it's night eight of the annual town meeting for the spring of uh, 2021. I am reconvening this uh, meeting and it will be the last night, which makes all of us very happy. Uh, we have some changes to vote totals for nights six and seven, which I'm going to announce now. For article 27, this is night six, the yeses were 209, noes were two and seven abstains. Article 28, 207 yes, seven no and eight abstain. Article 29, 218 no, <laughs> all right, 218 yes, zero no's and four abstains. Article 30, 223 yes, zero no, four abstains. Article 31, 214 yes, one no, five abstains. Article 32 main motion, 201 yes, eight no, 11 abstain. Article 33, amendment, 101, yes, 103, no, six, abstain. Article 33, main motion, 206, yes, 10, no, three, abstain. Moving on to night seven, article 19 and 20 in the motion to refer. New totals, 104, yes, 115, no, 10, abstentions. Article 19. Main motion, 167 yes, 45 no, and 14 abstentions. The Article 20 main motion was 170 yes, 46 no, and 10 abstentions. Article, Article 23 main motion, 218 yes, 3 no, 6 abstentions. Article 35, 186, yes, yes, 17, 17 no, no, 15, 15 abstentions. abstentions. Article 36, main motion, 179, yes, 24, no, and 12 abstentions. Okay, uh, before we begin, we are going to have a presentation by Danelle O'Neill about Brookline's Juneteenth celebration. Is he unmuted? Okay, need to unmute again. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Thank you. Uh, peace be with all of you in this space. My name is Donnell O'Neill Sr. I am a town meeting member from Precinct 4, a, li a lifelong resident of this town, uh, father of two awesome sons. Um, I come before you guys to invite you all to Brookline's Juneteenth celebration. Um, last year, there was a virtual celebration, and this year, we're going to have an in-person um, celebration in town. On June 19th, 2007, Governor Duval, Duval Patrick signed a proclamation, which made June 19th a day of observance to commemorate the date in 1865 in Galveston, Texas, when the slaves were told they were free. With an announcement of General Order Number 3 by Union Army General Gordon Granger, two years and two months after Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation. On July 24th, 2020, Governor Baker signed the Juneteenth Independence Day Bill found in Mass General Law Section 15 BBBBB. As amended, it reads The governor shall annually issue a proclamation setting apart the 19th of June as Juneteenth Independence Day to be observed on June 19th of each year and recognized in recognition of June 19th, 19, June 19th, 1865, when Union General Gordon Granger announced freedom for all slaves in the southwestern United States in recognition of the end of slavery in the United States, as well as the significant contributions individuals of African descent have made to the Commonwealth and to the United States of America. And recommending that 
set day to be observed um, in the appropriate manner by the people, unquote. Governor Baker was quoted saying, making June 19th an annual state holiday would help recognize the continued need to ensure racial freedom and equality. Juneteenth, Juneteenth, Juneteenth is possibly the oldest known US celebration of the end of slavery. The first celebration was June 19th, 1866 or 1867 in Texas. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, uh, Granger's announcement came more than, like I said, two years after President, him, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Two years and two months. The, the delay of freedom, equality, justice, as you know, still exists in the United States of America and definitely in our town of Brookline. We always proclaim that we are a progressive town. I would argue that we have not shown that by our actions as a town. This year, in less than a couple of weeks, Brookline can allow actions to speak louder than words. By attending and supporting Brookline's Juneteenth celebration, showing unity for the celebration of freedom and equality for all. We will have a freedom march starting at 345 Harvard Street in front of the Florida Ruff Ruffin Ridley School, heading down Harvard Street, a left on Route 9, AKA Boylston Street, and then a left onto Brookline Ave and entering the Brookline Ave field and playground where there will be food, free, free food, <laughs> music, carnival games uh, for the kids. Um, tents and tables will be set up for different Brookline departments and committees. Um, I, I, I thought about the police in this to help boost their morale, um, to give them opportunity to, to have community engagement. Um, so that gives that uh, the BBD D opportunity to do so in other departments in town. Um, I'm almost done, uh, Madam Moderator. Um, there will also be a tent um, provided by the Brookline POC committee for a place for folks to register to vote. Now, this, this invitation has been out um, again, uh, across the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So a lot of people will be attending this and this will give them opportunity to register to vote um, and, get, and get to know our town a little bit better. Um, in closing, uh, I would like to thank Brookline POC Committee, Brookline Black, Yellow, and Brown Men Club, Brookline Diversity Club. I would also like to thank publicly Aaron Gallantine <laughs> from, our, from our Department of Public Works, that commi uh, our commissioner. She has been essential in helping seeing this vision act actually happen. I'd also like to thank um, Caitlin Starr, the Diversity and Inclusion Department, for actually uh, for helping in support of this, as well as Lieutenant Pastor from the BPD, and and also the Brookline Community Foundation for uh, for sharing the same vision um, that we have over here. Uh, the organizations that I mentioned on actually seeing this happening and partnering up. Last thing, I I, I want to give thanks to Shushu Mero. Okay, a lot of folks might not know about Shushu Mero, um, God rest her soul, but she was the spark plug behind our, our annual Flag Day celebration. She was a town meeting member. Um, and, you know, uh, it, that Flag Day celebration united the town for one day. The whole town celebrated in, 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 in love and uh, celebrating each other in humanity. Um, since since her passing, I don't recall us having that celebration. So in 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 in, in the spirit of of unity and humanity, and I understand why Shushu Merrill did what she did and getting the Flag Day celebration going. I, I I would like to see this happen, and we all would like to see this happen to show the state in the United States that we're more than just talk; that our actions will speak louder than our words. Um, thank you, Madam Moderator. I, I, I hope to see everyone um, at the celebration. Thank you.
Thank you, Danelle. That was a, a great announcement and um, of a really important event. And I hope that as many of us can go as possible and show that we are a solid united community. So the structure, uh, as most of you know, um, will be to hear Article 9 and Article 40. So there is no motion offered under Article 38 so we are going to move directly to 39. In order to have the full panoply of moderators tonight, um, I am recused from Article 39 because while I was on the Zoning Board of Appeals, I oversaw uh, affordable housing projects uh, brought by Mr. Dahandi. And while there may not be any actual conflict of interest, I want to avoid any possible appearance of a conflict of interest. Thank you, Madam Moderator. <clears throat> The article before you is Article 39. The motion under that article is the motion in the words of the article, moved by Ms. Brown, seconded by Mr. Conquest, that uh, a resolution regarding the Bab Babcock Street parking lot affordable housing study committee. There are two changes that we need to make to convert an article to a motion. In the first line of the article on page 39-1, change it from to see if the town will vote to voted that the town vote the following resolution. And secondly, at the end of the motion, at the top of page 39-2, please strike the words or act on anything relative thereto. The debate under this article consists of two sides, one pro and one con uh, relating to the main motion that I've just described. The subject matter of your presentations will be limited to the Babcock Street parking lot and uh, I will uh, make sure that uh, our presentations are so limited. I call on Ms. Brown, you have five minutes. I just wanted to check to see if the IT people have my presentation. Do you Thank have you. her? Uh... It's up. Go ahead, Ms. Brown. Tell us who you are. I just need one second. My name is Deborah Brown. I am a co-petitioner for the warrant article. Warrant article 39. Uh, next page, please. I, I, I There's been a lot of email traffic already about warrant articles. It was 38 and 39. It's now simply 39. But the gist of it is that we want uh, an affordable housing study performed at uh, the Babcock Street parking lot. The reason for that is fairly simple. We have no of family affordable housing under development in Brookline. We have some area-wide studies, but no specific family affordable housing. We have, some would say that we are leapfrogging the 2016 housing production plan. We would argue that what we are proposing is consistent with that plan. Uh, some are going to say that there's inadequate information as it pertains to the Kent Street site, but we would respectfully disagree and you'll hear more about that from Mariah Nobrega. 
what we are asking for pure and simple is a study. That's it. And this work can happen while a more comprehensive plan is taking place. Next, next page, please. This is a picture of the Babcock Street parking lot that I took today at 12. As you can see, there are barricades up there, are storage facilities there. So it is not fully subscribed at this point at all. I went by this evening. There were more cars, but again, it was not full. I went by at about 6.30. Next slide. The town bylaws, section 4.08.38, actually make a make a strong argument that we have a legal obligation to be providing for family affordable housing. Yet again, we have none in a pipeline. Next page. Now, the 2016 Housing Production Plan also makes reference to uh, family affordable housing, as well as actually it makes reference to using uh, its available properties. And it says the town will look to encourage new housing and mixed use development where appropriate on municipally owned parcels. And, and so we've got that going back to 2016. I also want to point out that since 2016, we've been waiting for a full blown implementation of these terms. And why is it so important? Because when you look at housing, somewhere between 15 to 35 percent of the cost of housing could actually be land. By using public properties and engaging in this study, we also put ourselves in the position of perhaps lowering or, or having a positive effect on taxes and fees for residents. Next page, please. And, and this may be hard for you all to see, but what I did is, 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 is came up with sort of a, a, a sort of a timeline of such that sort of looks at, you know, what's going on. And, and, and I want you to take two messages from here, that it will take a long time to get to the Babcock Street parking lot study if we do everything in a very linear fashion. The second thing I want to point out is that our planning department is very busy. They are very busy. And if you look at the language in the warrant article, it actually tries to take into account that there are other resources that could perhaps be used. So 2016, we completed the housing production plan. You have one minute. Okay, thank you. So we go from there to 2021, we've, we've got the RFP that's out on the street. We've got, we're gonna complete the lower Boylston, we're gonna complete the upper Boylston, we've got a multifamily study, uh, next page. And there's other work that's taking place. This is an example, this is a map of publicly owned properties in Brookline. And you can see the two bottom dots in, in the very bottom that basically point to two areas where the town uh, owns property. Next page. But that's clearly not suitable for housing. If you look at this, what you'll see is a lot of schools and pay playgrounds. Again, not a lot of options. Next page. We considered a lot of factors, an awful lot of factors. But right, you know, you've got to think about the interest rates, you've got to think about the cost of development. You've got to think about a wide range of issues. And they're all here. And you got all of this uh, the other day when I sent around the email uh, explaining how we reasoned out why these particular sites. Next page. Uh, you've, had, you've had your five minutes, Ms. Brown. Uh, I'll give you one more minute. But please conclude within that minute. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Sandy. I'm, I'm not going to take you through all of the factors that we use to consider these sites. Uh, just, just go back to the analysis that we provided you. Next, next slide, please. Uh, we heard a lot of issues about parking. And we believe that uh, technology, uh, look, looking beyond Babcock, as, as, as well as also thinking about uh, the economic and other environmental considerations may come into play. Last slide. One of the benefits of this study is we've got, and I'm going to wrap up right now, Sandy, this is the last slide, is there's money available. We've got the ARPA funds. We 
got the CPA funds, and there's potentially state funds available that Rebecca Montner will discuss. So there are a lot of reasons to do this study. There are a lot of good reasons. We cannot allow ourselves to get so wrapped up in our fears that we don't do this study because people are relying on this housing, whether we're talking about workforce housing, whether we're talking about for, for low income residents, whether we're talking about the elderly or the disabled, we have- Please a conclude, Ms. Here. Brown. We have a basic need here. And again, we have nothing in the queue. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'm not scheduled to speak on this. Uh, select board. Well, we'll move along to the advisory committee, Ms. Westfall. Uh, good evening. Um, I assume I'm unmuted. You're um, fine. Great. Um, my name is Christine Westfall. I'm an at-large member of the advisory committee speaking for the advisory committee. The advisory committee recommends no action on this motion. Um, we recommended no action by a vote of uh, 18 no, six yes, and three abstentions. While everybody on the advisory committee acknowledges the pressing need for affordable housing and particularly for affordable family housing uh, and regrets the fact that building anything is slow. I, I ask any of you who are parents of school children to think about how long each of the school renovations and building projects has taken. Um, the uh, the reality is that we had some serious issues with the motion. Uh, first, we think that uh, simply focusing on affordable housing for the Babstar Street, Babcock Street parking lot, it's a little bit of a tongue twister, um, is too prescriptive. Uh, there was some concern that the neighborhood had not been alerted to a proposed reuse and that loss of the parking lot would adversely affect area merchants and residents and maybe the town as a whole um, in terms of access to Coolidge Corner. Um, the article asks the committee to use the Kent Street uh, uh, affordable housing initiative as a model and that initiative is, has not been completed. While we understand that you can get some information from the work that's been done so far, uh, the feasibility piece is, is still outstanding. Um, I, I want to point out that those who voted no action weren't opposed to affordable housing um, and they weren't opposed to adding more students to schools or the loss of the parking. What we really were focused on was the sense that we need a comprehensive plan and that this is piecemeal planning um, and is not in our best interest. Um, I'd also point out that the town has worked in the past to use uh, town-owned property and parking on Dummer Street to build affordable housing and is considering that actively for Kent Street. So it's not that it's out of our reach to do that. Um, but the piecemeal nature of this is problematic in terms of planning. While it doesn't, 30, appear, 30 that there's, while it doesn't appear that there's uh, uh, any new significant dollar amount uh, to this study, the reality is it will take significant town employee time, and it will also take significant volunteer time. And while we are blessed with a large group of volunteers, that is not infinite. Um, and so again, we heard from EDAP, we heard from uh, uh, the Housing uh, Advisory Board who all voted no action. And we are convinced that, that this will not expedite the production of affordable housing in a meaningful way, and that it therefore should not be voted favorably. Again, we voted no action. Um, Thank you. By a majority. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Takanami. And Mr. Green, would you get together with uh, your two other uh, members of the select board Ms. Hamilton and Mr. Van Skoyak, who voted no action on this and decide who's going to present the select board's position. Ms. Takanami. 
Oh, you already presented it, but uh, we'll get together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Amy Takanami, she, her, her, my time to Mariah Nobrega. Thank you, Mariah Nobrega, town meeting member, precinct four, and member of the Kent Station Street Affordable Senior Housing Committee, speaking in favor of warrant article 39. As warrant article 39. Warrant article committee. That warrant article passed 123 to 30 to seven. Favor many, if not most of you, voted a 10 to 9 vote went against that warrant article. The reason and major parcel study and advisory felt that those should be completed before moving ahead with any decisions around specific locations. Both the strategic asset plan and major parcel study were completed in 2018. In particular, of large parcels owned by the town, S Babcock Street, a parcel performing high, highest. Respective neighborhoods. This is what Warrant Article 39 contemplates. Doing an important point, I want to add that 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 committee was convened in 2017. We ahead of any project at the Kent Station lot. There are some opportunities to learn from that process, and one of them is that we don't need to wait for that process to conclude because that could take years before even beginning, beginning to look at other sites. We do not need to wait for that process to conclude. Municipal redevelopment moves very, very slowly. We don't have to worry that we are taking a precipitous step by voting to encourage a study. In fact, it's about the least precipitous step we could take given the recommendations of the major parcel study. Colleagues, I strongly urge you to vote, join me in voting yes for warrant article 39. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blood. Thank you. Um, I'm Roger Blood, I'm speaking for the Housing Advisory Board. Um, after hearing from the petitioner uh, and the public in a public hearing, um, a resolution to conduct a study of the town owned Babcock Street parking lot for possible affordable housing development. <clears throat> Housing Advisory Board members voted to recommend no action by town meeting on this article, <clears throat> although accompanied by the following statement of support for the petitioner's objectives in submitting this article. <clears throat> the HAB shares uh, the petitioner's goals and uh, advocacy for increased production of affordable housing and for consideration of affordable housing development opportunities and feasibility uh, on the Babcock Street parking lot and on all underutilized sites owned by the town. Uh, the HAB agrees with the petitioner that affordable housing should, should be an appropriate use for all or a portion of this particular uh, town owned parcel. Uh, house, housing development that entails the disposition of any town owned property requires a thorough and systematic approach, including analysis of the town needs that might be met by a reuse or redevelopment of all such sites. Planning work, planning department work uh, uh, presently underway or soon to begin under the auspices of the planning department includes several specific initiatives that taken together will, will include the range of tasks that um, would need to occur in order to achieve the objectives uh, of Article 39. These initiatives include the multifamily housing and parking studies currently underway and the updated housing production plan that's committed and soon to begin. The work program for the updated housing production plan 
specifically identifies the town's municipally owned parking lot as areas of opportunity that are to be targeted for special consideration, including analysis by the housing production plan consultant and uh, equally important, if not more significant community engagement and input. The HAB commends the petitioner for submitting both articles 38 and 39 and for drawing the attention of town meeting and the larger community uh, to the urgent need for more affordable housing, including family housing, and for urging that a high priority be given to realizing affordable housing development opportunities on town owned parcels including the Webstock Street Municipal Parking Lot. By a unanimous vote, the HAB recommends no action on Article 39 accompanied by these additional thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Um, good evening, Kimberly Richardson, town meeting member, precinct two. Um, I hate, I hate to beat a dead horse, but I will. I'll go back to the time that we spent on Article 18. We didn't know if it would offer affordable housing, but both sides of this town meeting fought for three days. One side for the beauty of the town, the other for the possibility of something more, including affordable housing. Today, I ask you to vote favorable on Article 39, because what does it hurt to take time to conduct a study? The outcome of the study may offer affordable, affordable housing opportunities for people like myself who would not be able to live in Brookline without affordable housing. People who deserve to live to live in Brookline, people who don't deserve to take a, people who deserve to take advantage of Brookline Public Schools. So again, a study, a research doesn't harm anyone. So please vote favorable on Article 19. Christine Westfall just discussed town meeting employees, employees' time and volunteer time. We are all volunteering now. So why can't we volunteer on something that will access will gain take access to those who are in need of housing? I'll volunteer my time. Please vote fair, favorable on Article 13, 39. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Yes, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Select Board apologizes for the confusion here. Uh, no one was actually designated to speak on, on Article 39. The problem was is that uh, during our hearings, uh, the uh, petitioner kept canceling uh, the uh, presentation and we heard uh, it at the last minute uh, and the board voted three to two uh, for no action. One of the reasons uh, is the fact that uh, Kent Street is uh, out there being developed and it is intended to be the template for future uh, affordable housing on town owned properties. Uh, as I understand it, Kent Street is coming in uh, with a requested subsidy of seven, five to $7 million and with parking that is increased by $2 million of money that the town would need to subsidize uh, this development. Uh, Kent Street um, is, uh, is uh, not anywhere near uh, being ready to, to go forward. Uh, and until we actually see if this can be done uh, using Kent Street, uh, Street as an example, um, the select board believes that no action is the more appropriate and more prudent approach to addressing our affordable housing needs here in Brookline. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Black. Thank you, Assistant Moderator. Uh, hello, Ryan Black, Precinct 6, pronouns he, him, his, and I'm in speaking in favor of Article 39. Now, I don't want to oversell this article as being a magic bullet to our town's affordability crisis nor say that it would be a bad idea to have a broader examination of affordable housing opportunities in Brookline as some other town meeting members, you know, particularly on the list there have suggested. But given the severity of our housing affor affordability problem in town, it behooves us to encourage the select board and all of our town's volunteers to actively explore chances to mitigate the, the crisis. And with Article 39, we can do just that with the, for the Babcock Street parking lot. Renters such as myself make up around 48% of Brooklyn's residents, and nearly half of us pay over 30% of our income towards rent. Many of us even pay between 40 and 50% of our income. Increasing the supply of affordable housing in Brookline is one way to reduce the cost burden on tenants in Brookline and ensure our town is more welcoming towards those of lesser means. 
Granted, we should be mindful of the limitations of the purely supply and demand approach to housing, and not consider it to be a panacea. Relatedly, should this study committee come to pass, I would encourage its members to focus on proposals that don't just adhere to the terms commercial developers would strongly prefer. This is a town-owned property after all, so we have leverage. It would be far more preferable to consider opportunities with public housing authorities, nonprofit developers, and community organizations, and ideas that aim high in terms of the number of affordable units. Let's not settle for only 25% of a building's unit being affordable. But I'll wrap there saying again, you know, all those ideas could be explored, you know, in depth on a study committee and we can deem what's what's the best fit. So again, please vote favorable action on Article 39. And I encourage my colleagues to always be watchful for and proactive about opportunities to address the affordable crisis, affordability crisis here in Brookline. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sainer. You have four minutes. Thank you very much, Paul Sainer, Precinct 13, co-chair of the Economic Development Advisory Board. And I have considerable professional and volunteer experience with affordable housing, including serving on the study committees that led to family housing um, town sponsored at both St. Aidan's and Olmstead Hill. Uh, EDAB uh, has um, a strong track record of supporting affordable housing, including the Kent Street study, which was to be the prototype for future potential municipal parking lot redevelopments. After hearing Article 26, uh, two EDAB members worked on a potential compromise resolution. The approach was um, to have, rather than a single property focus, a broader study of the public realm in Coolidge Corner that would have considered all municipal uses and things that are in flux, such as outdoor dining. Um, unfortunately, that was ruled out of scope. I think there's probably unanimity in this uh, virtual room tonight over our collective frustration over a finite resource, the town's planning efforts. Uh, this is the second um, consecutive town meeting with um, uh, an attempt to redirect the work of uh, the planning department. I want to underscore that the staff does really good work. Um, I forwarded uh, a link to uh, the planning department's uh, very um, impressive work plan that includes a significant amount of technical work relating to regulatory and non-discretionary um, uh, tasks. Uh, but also attempts to create um, the space for more proactive long-term uh, studies. Um, the um, reality is that um, we're all frustrated over Kent Street um, not having a deal, never mind a building five years later. I'm very frustrated that it's been 16 years since the comp plan prioritized the comprehensive district study for Chestnut Hill Village West, and that hasn't begun. And I'm very frustrated that there is no um, strategic asset plan that covers all of our municipal lots, which certainly EDAB had anticipated prior to any future uh, redevelopment opportunities. Um, there are consequences from advancing uh, Warren Article 39. Uh, perhaps we will not get to a conclusion on Kent Street. Certainly Chestnut Hill West will likely be uh, delayed. Um, there Good is um, absolutely going to be an impact on the small businesses that are um, trying to uh, emerge from COVID's uh, devastation. Uh, the town um, has, um, a robust plan for housing production update. Uh, there are a number of goals in the 2016 housing production plan that haven't been achieved. In my opinion, the housing production plan uh, will advance significantly affordable housing in town and will do so by prioritizing significant community engagement. In closing, um, in my opinion, as somebody that's probably served on more study committees than most, um, a single property po uh, focus is not a recipe uh, for success. And I dismiss the notion that it's only a study. That's a false narrative. Uh, EDAB 
uh, believes beyond uh, the need for a more narrow scope that we should respect the sequential work plan of the planning department. Uh, and uh, a vote against um, this Warren article is not a vote against affordable housing. It's rather a vote for good planning. I urge um, that you vote no action along with EDAB, HAB, the advisory committee and the select board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lynn Jones. Thank you, Assistant Moderator Gadsby. I'm Sean Lynn Jones from Precinct One, and I'm speaking in favor of Article 39. I know you all hope that we can adjourn early tonight, so I'm gonna to try not to repeat too many things that have already been said, particularly Thank about the much. overall problem of housing uh, insecurity and the slow progress that Brookline has made toward expanding the amount of affordable housing in this town. Uh, I will point out that uh, Rebecca Mountner, who may not get to speak tonight, given the length of the list, posted at 4.29 p.m. Uh, this afternoon a very thoughtful overview of what this study could do in terms of assessing the feasibility of affordable housing on the site and even identify the funding mechanism. Uh, I will, however, repeat one very important point. If we're going to build affordable housing, the priority should be building on town-owned land because we don't have to pay for the cost of the land and the funds we have for housing go further. It's as simple as that. And we don't have to worry about a 40B development in which we give up a lot of our control. We work on town-owned land. We can call the shots. Now, I decided to speak in favor of Article 39 when I read the select board's report and the combined reports on that article. It was a few weeks ago. And in a nutshell, that report says, basically, it would be too hard to build housing on the Babcock Street site. And therefore, we shouldn't do that study that's called for in Article 39. Now, that reminded me of what a famous son of Brookline said uh, a while back. We choose to do these things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When John F. Kennedy said that 50 years ago, he of course was talking about putting an American on the moon. That was a hard thing to do, but this country did it. Building affordable housing in Brookline is a hard thing to do, but that doesn't mean we should give up. The study of the Babcock Street parking lot, if done properly, may uncover innovative ways to address the multiple concerns that have been raised. Housing, parking, commercial vitality, the fire station, and the budgetary impact. We won't know the answers unless we do the study. And I'm puzzled by the argument that we shouldn't do piecemeal studies because it's usually combined with praise for the piecemeal study we're doing at 10th Street and praise for the Dummer Street development, which was indeed a piecemeal approach on just one site before we waited for everything to happen in this town. And that's why I'm in favor of Article 39 and the study, even if the conclusions are that this site cannot be used productively for affordable housing, the study may lead, lead to more general conclusions that can be applied elsewhere in this town. Vote for favorable action on Article 39. It's the right thing to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lesinski. Thank you, moderator. I'm David Lesinski, owner and operator of Eureka Puzzles, member um, of the uh, chair of the Coolidge Corner Merchants Association and resident of Precinct 6. I implore you to vote no on this particular amendment or this particular Warren article. Um, the CCMA and my members are, feel strongly that affordable housing is important. However, so is the vibrancy and the life that Brookline has to offer. This one particular amendment or this one particular parking lot will not solve the affordable problem housing in Brookline, but it can irretrievably harm the success of all of the businesses that are there. This is not to say that this is not something we should say no to forever, but at this point in time, I'm saying there are uh, too many other things that are going on. There's approximately five or six different major developments happening in Coolidge Corner. We are desperately trying to rebuild ourselves after COVID. We're trying to bring back customers. And at the same time, uh, we're dealing with other 40B developments to then yet again have, be asked to say, um, take on another study that is being done individually and in one particular aspect of life in Coolidge Corner is just 
not fair and does not give Brookline a sense of the overall importance that Cooler's Corner brings to this area. It is much too narrowly focused. I argue that we need a comprehensive look at all of the needs of all of the citizens and not simply to focus on one particular need, no matter how important that need is. So I vote you, I, I urge you please to vote no on this article. Thank you, moderator. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple of uh, comments from the floor, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Bob Miller, town meeting member from Precinct 8. Um, I want to point out that Precinct 8 is, in fact, the precinct within which the Babcock parcel sits, and I fully support this pro uh, project, this uh, warrant article. There's no question that the Babcock Street parking lot is underutilized. This is one of Brookline's most desirable neighborhoods for business and residential use. And um, this wonderful area has so much going for it, including a beloved bookstore, movie theater. We all know why it's a wonderful place. It's an area that hosts numerous elderly housing sites and it should be hosting affordable housing as well. There are many opportunities to improve the Coolidge Corner area of Brookline and make this even more successful for businesses and residents. And um, this project can be done while still maintaining the parking. In fact, um, the planning department um, has explored many ideas. I think it's about five or 10 years ago that they were talking about how to um, expand sidewalks and, and um, expand the while maintaining all of the parking and putting in bike lanes and really enhancing the area. So I would hope that and would expect that this group will consider those types of, of, of factors as they work on how this could work as an important piece of this neighborhood. I hope that the select board and the housing advisory board will encourage the study committee to coordinate with the planning department and any other town bodies that have been looking into this area. I have no doubt that the committee will include the neighborhood in their work. Um, and lastly, I just wanna say as a science teacher, uh, this year I was showing my students and we were studying about COVID-19 and we were looking at some of the reasons that the vaccine was able to be um, developed and implemented so quickly. And it had to do with doing overlapping things. So, you know, you, we really shouldn't be doing everything end to end. We need to be multitasking about this. And we, um, we should, um, I, I fully support uh, this Warren article. I intend to vote for it. I encourage you to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Yassine. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, Martin Yassine, Precinct 2, a 35-year resident of uh, John Street. And uh, I'm speaking in opposition to the Warren article. Uh, as I'm sure everybody in town knows we have a massive project going about to be constructed at the intersection of John Street and Pleasant Street and Beacon Street, a big project. The area uh, in which we live uh, has a density that is, uh, exceeds the Gaza Strip. Um, I have uh, the greatest respect for Ms. Brown and the uh, people whose position she represents, but I uh, very much think that every time there is something that has to be built in this town, uh, it always ends up within about a six block radius of Beacon Street and Harvard Street. And I think we've had a great, great deal of building here and we have tremendous density here. And I think that it serves the mental health and quality of life, which I don't hear anybody speaking about, the quality of life of the people who are already here to have some open space here in this area rather than yet another 
very large piece of construction, which turns John Street into another concrete canyon, as it may seem. So, um, as I say, I cannot support this article because I think it's already the article is itself a foregone conclusion that this is the best use of uh, the Babcock. I wanted to I make this comment and thank you very much. I don't want to exceed my time, sir. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I am Susie Roberts, Precinct 2. I happen to live just a few doors down from uh, Mr. Yassine, actually, and I am in support of his comments, but I, I do want to say that, excuse me, I'm very, I'm very uh, supportive of affordable housing, but at this point in time, I do believe that a study committee for the purpose of um, investigating the feasibility or the suitability, as, as some have uh, also suggested, is premature. We do have many comprehensive plans that are underway. Those should be finished, and there should be consideration for this parcel for other uses other than housing. I want to underscore as well the Waldo Durgan project that Mr. Mish Mr. Yassine just mentioned which has itself an eight to 10 story hotel, just a block and a half away from this parking lot, um, an eight to 10 uh, story hotel with 210 rooms, plus an apartment building with 143 units. Those of us who live in this area are subject to many, many 40B proposals. And, the, um, and I think at this time, um, where there is, uh, where there are a number of efforts for comprehensive studies throughout the town that we need to explore and finish our comprehensive studies of other parts of town so that Coolidge Corner is not singled out. And I agree with Mr. Yassine that I think by virtue of town meetings um, approval of this uh, resolution, that there would be a foregone conclusion that no other town uh, sponsored use would be for this for this particular parcel. And I'm sure that there are other ideas that all of us creatively might have for it. So right now I urge no action on Article 39. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Levy. Good evening, Mr. Moderator, Mark Levy, Precinct 7. Since we're on the internet, I think I have to do quotations to support everything I say. So let me get the quotations out of the way first. Uh, it was, I believe, Justice Holmes who said, justice delayed is justice denied. I think it was uh, the father of uh, fiscal policy, uh, and I just went blank, who said when people talk to him about uh, leave the depression alone, in the long run, the economy will fix itself. And his reply was, in the long run, we're all dead. And I'll think if I can remember the, uh, the third one when I get there. But uh, the point I want to make is that there is no foregone conclusion. It may be a, even be a foregone conclusion that the study committee will recommend affordable housing at that place. I don't believe that's true. But it could well be the momentum that's behind it. But before the town can lease or sell property, it has to come back to town meeting. I believe it's for a two thirds vote. Um, this will, this means that town meeting always has a chance to say yes or no, or to come back with something different um, uh, than, uh, than what the study committee recommends. The important thing I think is to remember what William James, this is the third one, who was a professor of philosophy and, and psychology at Harvard uh, said, which was belief is a willingness to act. I wanna see us willing to act 
expeditiously. The planning department has lots of talent, lots of good intentions, lots of brains, but they're short of people. There just aren't enough people there. And everything is gonna take a very long time if we're waiting for the planning department to do this comprehensive plan. I think it's worthwhile taking a look at what we can accomplish at that point, at that site. Does a development, uh, does a mixed use make sense there? 30 seconds. Uh, thank you. Uh, to conclude, I'd like to see us get the car, the, the uh, boat moving and uh, not have uh, be underway with no way on. Thank you. Thank you. The question has been called. Uh, is there a second? Motion's been seconded. I have the following speakers signed up in favor of the motion under this article. Ms. Greenwald, Ms. Bernard, Mr. Donda, Mr. Weiscott, Mr. Benson, Ms. Wu, Ms. Takanami, Ms. Motner. Following speakers signed up opposed, Mr. Hoy, Ms. Gilman. The following have come to a microphone figuratively. Mr. Chris, Mr. Ben Skoyak with a comment, Mr. Ms. Takanami uh, in favor of the article, Mr. Richmond with a comment, Mr. Silberberg opposing the article, Mr. Toffel with a question, Ms. Goodwin with a question, Mr. Hoy with a question and comment, Mr. White with a comment, Ms. Bignami with a question, Ms. Vogt uh, to speak in favor of the article and Ms. Schweitzer undoubtedly in favor of the article of the motion. Uh, with that in mind, um, not quite yet. Uh, I think we've had an adequate airing of both sides of the issue here. And I ask you when you, before you cast your vote to uh, ask yourselves whether hearing from another half dozen speakers on both sides of the issue is going to change your mind. With that, we'll start the voting period. All right, the voting period has commenced. This is a vote to terminate debate, requires a two thirds majority. Voting period is terminated. Ms. McNally. McNally, yes. Motion fails by a vote of 112 in favor, 93 opposed, and eight abstentions. We'll continue with some speakers who have signed up in advance. Ms. Greenwald. Hello, my name is Ann Greenwald from Pre Town Meeting Member from Precinct 8, and I'm going to cede my time to Rebecca Mountner. Ms. Mountner. Good evening, Rebecca Plout Mountner, uh, Precinct 11 by night, and a Town Meeting Member from Precinct 11 by night and by day, affordable housing developer. As many of you know, part of my day job. Uh, includes developing affordable housing and I have been engaged by municipalities to conduct feasibility studies such as the one we are discussing in this Warren article. I'd like to briefly address some things that have been said recently. Uh, there's nothing to suggest that doing enough feasibility study of affordable housing would diminish the availability of parking in the long term on this lot. As we have seen at Kent Street it's entirely possible to keep parking and build housing above. This happens all over the city of Boston and Massachusetts or any in cities nationwide. Um, I have great respect and appreciation for the businesses in Coolidge Corner, but it is quite surprising to me to hear folks talk about the idea that bringing more residents uh, to a, a location that is 
off a main commercial strip would actually have a negative effect on the businesses. Um, that, that aside, I'd like to briefly address what, what a feasibility study is and what we could expect from it. A feasibility is, study is a way of figuring out what is possible. It's about what can fit on the site. We can all speculate on what we think is appropriate, but without having detailed professional expertise on things like um, from geotechnical engineers and financial analysis, it's hard to know what's really possible. For instance, we would not have known what was possible in changing the inclusionary zoning bylaw if we hadn't had outside expertise tell us that we could make those adjustments that we voted a few nights ago that will be very favorable for the town. But we needed the outside expertise to ensure that would not have a negative impact on the, um, um, the town's ability to generate revenue for affordable housing. I want to just follow up. I put some comments in the uh, listserv, but I want to follow it on, up on a few things. Although this is a resolution, I just want to emphasize that there are sources available to pay for this work. So we are really asking for what could potentially be free research on what is possible and whether it would be a good place to advance our 30, affordable 30 housing goals. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, some colleagues and friends in Precinct 8 have also asked me to mention that we should remember this is the, near Waldo Durgan, and that is a location where we specifically gave away about 11 units of affordable housing that were to be built on site with the promise that we would build it some other time, some other place. It seems especially fitting therefore to at least explore the possibility of affordable housing on the site. And I, based on my professional expertise say, would say that it is entirely possible to do a very solid feasibility study on the site without yet having developed the Kent Street parcel. Thank you so much. I hope you'll join me in voting favorable action. Mr. Hoy. Gil Hoy. Thank you, uh, Gil Hoy, town meeting member, precinct 13. Any study of the Babcock Street parking lot for reuse, it seems to me, should be a comprehensive, broad analysis of all of the best possible uses for the site. With careful consideration of the town's sometimes competing needs with active and robust public participation. By limiting the study here only to affordable housing, as this article does, I believe we would be tying our own hands. Why would we do this? Affordable housing is important. It's very important. The town needs more. But affordable housing is not the town's only need. It is one of many. It's not the only thing for us to think about. Yet that's what this article is saying. Please vote no action. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bernard. Good evening. Lauren Bernard, town meeting member from Precinct 8. Um, I want to point out two things quickly. Um, is that, yes, again, Precinct 8 is precisely where this site is. And secondly, I served on the Coolidge Corner Study Committee that, um, that set the plan for the Waldo Durgan uh, zoning change. So this is something I'm familiar with, and particularly the question that Rebecca Montner brought up about uh, transferring out 11 affordable units. I am speaking in favor of this article. And I wanna say also that I happen to live three blocks from this site, probably closer than anybody else who has spoken. My colleagues have already stated so many worthy reasons to vote favorable action on this article. And most importantly, that there is simply no family affordable housing in the pipeline. So I'm gonna speak about something else. The affordability crisis is a growing problem that is like an ep epidemic in Massachusetts. I don't know if a lot of you saw, but this weekend, the Globe, had an article that featured uh, Martha's Vineyard that the new fire chief cannot find an affordable home on the island for himself and his family. Same with the postal clerk. Same with many people who provide essential services. This is also happening on Cape Cod. A beloved restaurant and bakery cannot offer sit down dining this summer for the second summer in a row, first because of COVID and this year because his potential employees, including his chef, cannot find an affordable place to live. 
You might say, these are the Cape and the Islands. This is in Brookline. Well, guess what? It's coming. It's already starting. This is what's starting to happen here and in other wealthy communities throughout Massachusetts. And do we really want to be a community that says to the people who work for us, go ahead and work here, but don't even think about living here. Because all we're asking in this warrant article is a study. And a study does not mean you pull the trigger. I sat on a study committee. We spent a while before we quote, pulled the trigger. A study is exactly what it purports to be a study. And I think for the essential workers of this town who don't want to have long commutes from Quincy or Framingham or some of the other places they, they can live more affordably, we should be looking at low income housing, what we like to call workers housing and all sorts of housing for people of limited means. And this is what the study would accomplish is simply to see how feasible this site is. I fully support Warren Article 39 and I would hope that you would give this some thought too before we become like Martha's Vineyard, a place where only the rich and famous can live. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gilman. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant Moderator. My name is Jane Gilman, Precinct 3, speaking in opposition, mainly because I feel this is no way to run a town. We have all kinds of good plans for this spot or that spot. But as Mr. Hoy said, we don't know what the highest and best use of this particular spot is because we're not taking into account all the other competing needs. I'm also concerned with the way affordable housing has become a buzzword that means different things to different people. And I also point out that just a few steps from this particular site is a new high rise going in on Green Street, which has no embarrassment about being known as luxury housing. And this is going through the ZBA right now. So we're not really planning on how we're using our spaces and we are using them up. Um, I think we need a broad study of what we need, not spot by spot decisions. I also wanna say that the housing that's going up now in particular micro units is taking spaces that might otherwise be used for families. Uh, and I, I want an overview. I want someone at the helm saying, yes, this is what we need or no, we don't need more micro units here. So I think rather than spot picking spots and saying good spot, I think we all want real housing for real people that will close the wealth gap and help folks maintain stability. This is not the way to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Christ. Mr. Christ. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Alan Christ, and I'm a town meeting member in Precinct 4, as well as an architect and a member of EDAB. I was also a member of the Kent Station Senior Housing Committee, and I would like to provide some clarification regarding the process for Kent Station and how it might relate to Babcock Street. When the committee began its study of Kent Station, we were limited to a study of only one parcel, which required underground parking in order to be feasible. Uh, however, during the process of studying the site, it was noted that the immediately adjacent Kendon Webster town lot, uh, if it had been included in the study, would have provided more affordable options for accommodating the public parking in an above grade configuration. And this might have improved the feasibility of the overall affordable housing project. Well, I strongly agree with Deborah regarding the need for affordable housing, as well as the need to keep the scope of a study to a concrete uh, achievable level. I feel that the situation at Babcock Street is analogous to Kent Station and combining a study of Babcock with the adjacent Center Street and Center Street West parking lots would allow the town to develop a coherent phasing plan for the removal and replacement of any parking on these lots 
to ensure that the public parking is located in an optimal location, affordable to construct, and is balanced with affordable housing, commercial vitality, and robust public spaces. I support increasing the scope of this study to look at Babcock along with the public Center Street and Center Street West lots during the next town meeting. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, it's John Van Skoik from the Select Board. Was I um, called upon because I didn't hear my name called, but I, I was asked to unmute. Yes, you 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 were called upon by your Sandy, moderator. Sandy, I'm not hearing you. You should be able to hear me now. Yeah, and I'm still not hearing you. I'm sorry. I don't, and I don't know. It sounds. It seems like you're hearing me, but I don't know who else is or isn't. <laughs> Would you like me to speak? Go ahead. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> it's still unclear to me, but I'll start speaking. And if you, if I shouldn't be speaking, you can cut me off. Uh, starting over again, it's John Van Skoik uh, from the Select Board, um, and uh, I want to make a, a comment on this that hasn't yet been made. Uh, and I thank Alan Chris very much for what he just said, because uh, one of the things that I think needs to be asked about this particular proposal that isn't explained in the proposal is how, how was Babcock Street chosen? You know, why not Center Street? Why not Fuller Street? Why not Webster Street? Um, there, are, there are other options that could have been chosen just as easily as Babcock Street. And I don't see the rationale explained as to why Babcock Street was chosen for this proposal. And what that suggests is that there really hasn't been the kind of review of if we are going to embark on a second study of uh, affordable housing, uh, which of course I favor as does everyone I think in this room, if we are gonna embark on a second study of affordable housing built over a parking lot, Shouldn't we sh first decide wh which is the parking lot or parking lots that offer the greatest opportunity for the most affordable housing? And also, which, which ones are, are most in need for perhaps other uses and therefore shouldn't be considered? But we haven't done any of that. And all of a sudden, we're off and running, having chosen Babcock Street for affordable housing without doing any of that work. The other thing I want to say is, I have a prop. Um, it's the annual report. And if you turn to page 13, you'll see the list of all of the committees that have been created for select board members to take part in. 37 of them, 37 of them. And what this speaks to is a process that I'm sorry to say has somewhat run amok which is good ideas come before town meeting and are considered one at a time without anybody considering what does this add up to? And if it adds up to 37 different committees that individual select board members have to divide up and serve on, and then staff have to divide their time up for, um, have we chosen the right priorities for that much work for those people? And I, I haven't seen this go through a process of prioritization. And that is one of the reasons that as a select board member, um, I voted for no action. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to take a couple more comments from the floor. Ms. Takanami. Hi, Amy Takanami, she, her, hers, town meeting member in precinct 10. As a lifelong renter here in Brookline, who hopes to someday raise my own family in this community I call home, my options for affordable family housing are currently extremely limited. This is true for me. I'm sure it's true for some of us here tonight. 
And it's also true for the 1300 families currently sitting on BHA's waiting list. We have a responsibility to start meaningfully acting on an issue that so many of us here agree is an urgent crisis. This is why I am speaking tonight in favor of Warren Article 39 to study the potential for affordable family housing on the Babcock Street parking lot site. It needs to be stressed again, this Warren Article merely provides for a study of this town owned parcel of land. We have nothing meaningfully to lose by engaging in this study and the possible benefits should resonate with all of us here. Building affordable family housing on this site would bring extra revenue for our local businesses, something that we desperately need as we get closer to fully reopening our public spaces. And it is an important opportunity for us to start actually acting on the values we claim to hold. The Babcock Street parking lot is a prime spot for promoting increased traffic into local businesses in Coolidge Corner. And it also serves as an important symbol of our real dedication to creating a Brookline for all. In most towns and cities, including ours, public and affordable housing is often relegated to the outskirts of town, sending an implicit message to all about how these residents are viewed by our community. By building affordable family housing in the heart of Brookline, by the spots most shared and beloved by all, we're sending a powerful message that we truly and genuinely regard all of our neighbors as valuable members of our community. I hope you will join me in voting favorable action on Warrant Article 39. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richmond. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Oh, hold on. Uh, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Clint Richmond, Precinct 6. I'm actually very excited about the potential of housing for this site and will be voting yes. In fact, if I was directing the town, I think this is a better site than Kent Street, which is a much more versatile site, and Center Street and Fisher Hill are also very versatile. But in this case, I, I visited the site recently and, and, it, and I couldn't think of anything else it could be used for, frankly, except maybe Parkland, which is uh, uh, Precinct 8 is severely underserved by parks. And I hope that CPA funds can be used to acquire more town property for parkland in or near this location. But I, I don't see the value of mixed use because I think we need to be maximizing affordable housing. Um, and finally, I would note that this site has some mature trees on John Street, which I hope can be preserved as well. So thank you very much and I'll be voting yes. Thank you, Mr. Silverberg. Then I'll take the motion for the question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Isaac Silverberg, Precinct 8. Um, so I, I guess I have to chuckle a little bit that at uh, the last comments. Um, I'm opposing Warrant Article 39 for a couple of reasons, but the big one is that I can think of other uses for the site and not instead of affordable housing, but in addition to. And I'm a little flummoxed, to be honest, hearing some petitioners talk about how, yes, we can walk and chew gum at the same time and do many things at once. Well, this warrant article doesn't provide for a task force or a committee to do multiple things at once. It provides for a task force to do one thing. Now, some of those, and to be clear, I live right there. My bedroom window looks out onto the parking lot. And before anyone tries to call me a NIMBY, I am someone that would like to see more uses out of the site. I'll name a few that could possibly be there. A need that we have in Coolidge Corner long-term is for large floor plate office space. And that land jumps right up onto the back of a lot of our commercial proper, a lot of our commercial zoned space on Beacon Street. We have a need for potentially a new fire station, which is gonna be renovated, which the fire department is thinking about looking at that site. We could put a combination of affordable housing, kind of capital A, capital H under the affordable housing authority. Um, we could also do a mixture of that or a partnership with a nonprofit, um, like two life communities, we could put in some market rate housing. Um, and for people who think that there could be no other possible use for the site, I mean, for people that want to deck over a parking lot, um, I would urge you to consider the streetscape and what you would think about if we chose to take a prime piece of real estate so close to a commercial center and say that, forget a bank or a cell phone store, there's just going to be no commercial use on the first floor. Um, However, this article winds up going, I fully intend on bringing forward a Warren article for the November town meeting um, to look at this and the entire Coolidge Corner area in a more comprehensive way. 
Um, and if this article passes, then I hope that it will include um, the uses that are discussed right here. And if this warrant article fails, I wanna make sure that looking at the types of issues and affordable housing, capital A, capital H, that's being discussed right here is also something that is included in that warrant article that I wanna bring forward this fall. But if we wanna walk and chew gum at the same time, let's make sure the article we're voting on actually lets us do both. Thank you. Thank you. I will take a motion for the question in the hopes that the thirst of town meeting has been slaked by an additional 20 minutes of debate. Uh, we have, uh, is there a second? Thank you. We have the following signed up in favor. Mr. Donda, uh, Mr. Weiscott, Ms. Benson, Mr. Benson, Ms. Wu, Ms. Greenwald, no additional speakers opposed. I have the following speakers in the queue. Mr. Toffel, Mr. Ms. Goodwin, Mr. White, Ms. Bignami, Ms. Vogt, Ms. Schweitzer, Mr. Gaysach, Ms. Pelkey, Ms. Ms. Weaver, Mr. Stone, Ms. Fried Wendy Friedman, Mr. Hyatt, and Ms. Zimmerman. Takes a two-thirds vote. This is a vote to terminate debate. Go ahead. The voting period has commenced. Voting period is over. Ms. McNally. McNally, yes. Mr. Lipson. Lipson, yes. Motion carries by a vote of 173 in favor 40 opposed, eight abstentions. The motion under Article 39 is on pages 39-1 and 39-2. We'll now have a vote on Article 39 main motion. Voting period has commenced. Voting period has terminated. Ms. McNally. McNally, no. Mr. Lipson. Lipson, yes. 117, yes. 100, no. 10 abstentions. Motion carries by a vote of 117 in favor, 100 opposed, and 10 abstentions. Thank you. I'm delighted to turn over the podium to Madam Moderator. Okay, this is our last article of the night of the meeting, Article 40. Uh, it is a request that the town adopt a resolution regarding funding of BIG. Uh, it is moved by Ms. Bastian and seconded by Mr. Saltzman. Before we get on to the main motion, there are some changes. Uh, on 40, page 48, at the sentence starting, Therefore, be it resolved. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, 
God. Okay, the sentence starting, therefore be it resolved that the select board establish a committee. Committee should be changed to working group. Okay, now we will discuss the motion. The first speakers are Ms. Bastian and Mr. Saltzman who have a combined total of eight minutes. Hey everybody, Bonnie Bastian, town meeting member in precinct five. Um, Dan and I will be sharing a slide presentation. So halfway through we're gonna switch and he will do the rest of the slides. Um, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> um, so uh, my name is Bonnie Bastian and um, I'm also a board member for Brookline Interactive Group. Um, Dan Saltzman and I wrote this warrant article to begin a conversation in town about who big is, the enormous value they provide and what is possible for the future of BIG's partnership with the town. I wanna to be extremely clear that BIG is not a line item in the town's budget. We do not receive town money. BIG is an independent nonprofit community media center. Next slide, please. The problem warrant article 40 will solve. Um, the funding model that BIG has had for over 30 years is going away and we project that we will lose half of our funding by 2025. The large majority of BIG's funding is the 2% of the 5% of per subscriber cable fees allowable under federal cable franchise law, while the other 3% goes to the town. Both the town and BIG are losing this money due to the precipitous decline in these cable fees due to cord cutters and streaming services. Next slide, please. So what does Warrant Article 40 do? It's a resolution to create a community media working group to aid in identifying potential stable funding mechanisms in collaboration with the town, to also explore further partnerships and to examine leverage opportunities with cable companies. I wanna acknowledge the very, very generous $196,000 in emergency funds BIG received from the town in the early months of COVID. It was clear that this level of work needed from BIG wasn't sustainable without financial help in that moment. So we thank the town for that critical support. Next slide. And now we're gonna watch a very brief video. BIG kept our local democracy transparent and amplified Brookline voices during a global pandemic and major societal change. We gave you the tools to make sure all of Brookline voices are heard and amplified. We assured that local decision making was live on multiple streaming and cable platforms and that local government and emergency alerts were accessible. In 2020, big services expanded like never before, tripling our community content. We covered Brookline High School's four hour live drive through graduation on our community cable channels, Juneteenth events on local porches, Black Lives Matter protests and community dialogue. And we partnered to assure that youth programs and nonprofit organizations were supported. Brookline Interactive Group is an incredible community partner for Steps to Success. Over the last few years, BIG has provided incredible programming by giving our students their voice. They work with our students on our Summer Connections program, teaching them digital media and having this kind of access to democratic media where anyone can get their voice heard is an amazing resource. I'm very thankful that Brookline Interactive Group both sees the importance of amplifying our voice as an organization, but also amplifying the voices of our students. BIG provides support for older adults and at all times, but right now it's especially essential. Uh, so they provide education in the medium and support in producing. And all I hear about is what BIG is doing to uh, help people communicate, to get news out, to get facts out, information out. Uh, their services support the Brookline Community Aging Network and they support all of our events and now much of the communication that occurs. I ask us all to support BIG. They are essential. We partnered with the town of Brookline to train and support community leaders to live stream online 552 live community events like voter information, issue forms and involving public health, small business and school reopening information. 
I cannot say enough about the support that we receive from the Brookline Interactive Group, especially, you know, as the roles and meetings in the public sphere have evolved since the onset of COVID-19. I can say with 100% confidence, we would not have been able to transition to remote public meetings safely uh, without fear of Zoom bombing or, you know, insecurity with the meetings and being able to provide access to the public to be involved in that dialogue, especially during that kind of critical state of emergency time without big support. Unfortunately, BIG's critical community coverage may not survive without your support. Even as BIG expands its public media mission, our traditional funding from cable fees will be cut in half over the next five years. Please support the future of community media in Brookline. More information and our 2020 annual report is available at brooklineinteractive.org. You're muted, muted, Ms. Bastion. Um, now is the moment where I would hand it over to Dan Saltzman. He needs to be unmuted. Yep, I'm in, unmuted. You hear me, right? Yep. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Saltzman, town meeting member, of Precinct Six, and board president of Brookline Interactive Group, affectionately known as Big. Big has been recognized in so many ways over recent years. We don't have time to go through all of the accolades, and you just saw that great video, but the list is impressive. Last year, Brookline Arts Commission awarded BIG the 2020 Cultural Contributor Award. In 2017, BIG representatives were flown to Kenya and presented on virtual reality at the United Nations Environmental Assembly. BIG is truly a regional and indeed a national leader in community-based local media. Next slide, please. Here's a graph showing the breakdown of BIG's diverse content. Despite delivering 276 hours of government content, in 2020, government programming is only one quarter of the total content produced. BIG's programming touches all aspects of community life in Brookline. Next slide, please. This slide shows the dramatic threefold increase in demand for BIG services this past year. And these pandemic pivots are indeed the new normal. Hybrid meetings are already being codified in states like California and Connecticut, and calls for greater government transparency are growing, especially here. You have one minute. But as demand for big services are dramatically increasing, big is rapidly losing revenue. Next slide, please. In recent years, big recognized the need to develop new sources of income to offset the declines from cable company revenues. Here we can see how the pandemic affected big's efforts to diversify income sources to mitigate these cable losses. This was a setback for us in what was already a difficult financial situation. Next slide, please. If we don't act, big's very survival is in question. So why should we care? Why is this important? Big is not just the group that televises meetings. Big fills the void for local media. Big provides, seconds. Big provides expertise, amplifies Brookline's diverse voices, trains the next generation of media makers, supports nonprofits. Big keeps the residents well-informed and our democracy thriving. Next slide, please. And I'm wrapping up. The main purpose of this article is to establish a community media working group and we need to aid big in developing stable funding sources not dependent on cable TV. We should encourage future partnerships between big and the town for the benefit of all of Brookline. Please support big and vote favorable action on Article 40. Thank you. Mr. Warren. Hey, good evening, Paul Warren. Precinct one speaking on behalf of a unanimous advisory committee. Article 40 is a resolution requesting that the select board establish a working group to identify among other strategic initiatives, potential stable funding mechanisms for Brookline Interactive Group and to explore further partnership opportunities for the benefit of the Brookline public. Big provides contractually obligated services to the town including broadcast meeting coverage, public access to equipment and facilities, and also community uh, accessible education and training programs. As a result of COVID, uh, as mentioned by Bonnie and Dan, 
uh, we experienced a threefold increase in live and recorded content from 2019 to 2020. The organization also experienced a rise in operating costs due to an increase in demand, as well as the need to operate remotely. As Bonnie mentioned, BIG's funding comes primarily through cable franchise fees. BIG receives 97% of its funding from peer subscriber cable fees allowable under federal cable franchise law. The fee is split 40-60 as mentioned with BIG receiving 40% of the collected fees and the town receiving 60%. In 2019, that translated into approximately $504,000 was allocated to BIG while $594,000 went to the town. Both the town and BIG are experiencing reduced revenue as a result of the decline in subscriber cable fees due to users like me switching to the internet and content streaming services such as Netflix. And as I think Bonnie mentioned, subscriber uh, revenue fees have been declining 11 to 14%. This continued reduction in cable franchise fees revenue coupled with the increase in demand uh, for remote live and recorded media, media has resulted in the need for BIG to identify a long-term viable economic model and funding source for its continued contractual obligation to the town. Brookline Interactive plays a critical role in keeping residents informed and engaged in our local and government. BIG is asking for our help in identifying a sustainable path forward for their organization and for our partnership. The advisory committee believes that a working group appointed by the select board and that engages with the public through the open meeting law process will play an important role in ensuring BIG's future service to our town and its partnership with Brookline. Now I'm gonna make a bit of an unusual ask uh, from an advisory committee member. Uh, given 15 seconds to do it. Meeting, which has times resembled a bench clearing brawl between the Red Sox and the Yankees. Wouldn't it be great if we ended town meeting on a supremely positive note by unanimously supporting out of the 40? Helping big chart their future given their support for our residents and our town during our most challenging time, seems like a cause that we can all rally behind. Please Let's finish up. Big a unanimous vote of support and a long overdue well done by voting yes on Article 40. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fernandez, three minutes. Thank you, Madam Moderator, Raul Fernandez, Vice Chair of the Select Board, speaking for a unanimous and dare I say enthusiastic Select Board recommending favorable action on Warren Article 40. This resolution recognizes Brookline Interactive Group's essential work, seeks to establish a more formalized and long-term partnership with the town, and asks us to assist big with securing additional funds to counteract the loss of revenue from dwindling cable subscriptions. As town meeting members may already know, a significant source of funding for big is a local fee assessed on cable subscriptions like Comcast and RCN. An increasing number of Brookline residents have been opting out of cable, often in favor of streaming services on which municipalities are currently not allowed to assess such fees. This loss of revenue hurts both big and the town would share in those cable fees. Shifting the split more in favor of big would certainly help big's operations, but it would also reduce funds available to the town and subsequently funding for other important programs. Uh, the board recognizes that big has been an invaluable partner during these challenging times. That's why the town supported big with the additional funding during the pandemic to support big's operations. The board is also in full support of this resolution, which seeks to explore innovative ways to find even more funds for bigs. For big, <laughs> we're excited to see what ideas may emerge from a staff-led working group with petition from the petitioner participation rather from the petitioners and other interested parties to secure more stable funding for the future. Bottom line, the board believes big has been a tremendous partner and will continue to support endeavors to support big moving forward, including this one. A unanimous select board recommends favorable action on Warren Article 40. Thank you. Uh, the question's been called. I will allow a vote since we have uh, Mr. Doldren and Ms. Bernard in line and now Harry Friedman. But I am going to allow uh, the motion for the vote to be called. For the question to be called, if there's a second. 
been seconded. All right. Okay, what's your point of order? Michael Burstein, Precinct 12. Um, could you indicate which speakers are speaking in favor and which are speaking against? Uh, Mr. Doldren is speaking in favor. I do not know uh, the position of Ms. Bernard and Mr. Friedman. Okay, we're ready, we're ready to take a vote. Okay, uh, Ms. McNally, what is your vote? McNally? McNally, McNally, yes. Uh, Mr. Lipson? Lipson, Lipson, yes. The motion passes with 191 yes. 19 no and 13 abstentions. Okay, we will now take a vote on the main motion, which is on page 40-7 through 40-8, 40-8, uh, a resolution regarding the funding of BIG. We start the vote now. Ms. McNally? Ms. McNally? McNally, yes. Mr. Lipson? Lipson, Lipson, yes. The motion passes with 221 votes for yes, one no, and four abstentions. That is our last motion. Uh, we are about to adjourn, but before we do, I wanna thank you all for your patience, cooperation and support as I've made it through my first town meeting. I truly appreciate it. And I truly appreciate that we are finishing tonight and not next week. I look forward to having a debriefing as was Mr. Gatsby's tradition to get feedback and hear comments on how to improve things. Uh, at least November's meeting will be in person. I'll keep you up to date as will Representative Vitolo on the state of hybrid meetings where some will be able to participate remotely and others can participate in person. Currently, there's no legislation in place that allows that. I would also like to thank the multiple unsung heroes who have made these remote meetings possible. Kareem Mateen, our audiovisual specialist, David Marquardo, also a tech wizard and the person who takes care of the voting and many other things. Tanisha Bland, who handles the phone during the meetings and gives me messages, um, especially when I've screwed things up. Kelly Durgan, who does the lighting. The four young women who handle the chaos of admitting more than 250 people to the meetings, Air Nicole Belly, Beth McDonald, Michelle Trejeda, and Kristen Curtis. I would also like to thank former select board member Ben Franco, who has been our chat monitor and a very busy fellow. And to thank my assistant moderator, uh, Sandy Gadsby, who is progressing nicely in his job. Finally, a huge shout out to Big. Thank you all. The meeting is dissolved. Oh my God. There had to be one more thing, didn't there? Okay, let's vote. Well, I wanted to hit it twice on it. Let's vote to uh, dissolve and see if that's approved.
<laughs> oh, dear God. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lipson. Lipson. Lipson, yes. Okay. 240X, three no, two abstentions. Okay, we have 204 yes, three no, and I'd like to know their identities, but I guess we will. And two abstentions. Now the meeting is dissolved. I will see you in November. <laughs>